So, here's the situation. With half the population of Genshin taking out their wallet to pull in the upcoming character banner, most of you are probably gonna end up with a 4-star character known as Kujo Sera. Now, Sarah here isn't going to be the best character in that banner. That title goes to the actual god the 90% of people are going to be pulling for. But don't you dare sleep on this chick because Sarah is most likely going to be one of the go-to supports in Genshin Impact starting in the near future. And no, it's not because she wears a skin tight outfit. Yeah. Nope. Now, in order to understand how Sarah is going to be one of your go-to supports when she becomes available, we have to talk about her skills. First, her E, the Tengu Storm Call. So how this skill works is that when you activate it, Sarah basically does a James Harden step back and she gains something called the Crow Feathers Cover. While having this cover active, Kujo Sarah can then use a charge attack and wherever that attack lands, leaves a new Crow Feather which will then explode. Pretty complicated for an AoE skill, but here is why it's so good. Whoever is the active character on the field when the Crow Feather explodes receives an attack bonus buff similar to a Bennett Q. So essentially what you'll have on Sarah's E is a more consistent attack buff that you'll probably be pumping out every time it's off cooldown. But wait, it gets better. When you activate her elemental burst called Subjugation, not only is Sarah going to be calling upon a lightning strike that spreads in multiple directions dealing AoE damage, but the same attack bonus buff will be applied to whoever is the active character on the field. So it doesn't matter which skill you activate, either one of them is going to be available whenever you swap to her. The only downside here is that you're going to be swapping a lot. If you're playing on a higher ping, I'd recommend testing her out first and seeing how she feels because if you mess up your swap and miss like half a second, she'll just apply the buff to herself. Yeah, yeah. You're feeling strong. You're feeling tough. You like it rough. What? Now, the inevitable comparison is will she become better than Bennett? As much as I want to, I don't think so. Bennett has two advantages over Sarah. Number one is that Bennett's element is just meta. Melt and Vaporize are the strongest elemental reactions right now, so for most people who's looking to maximize their damage for Abyss, Bennett would probably remain their first choice. His second advantage is his healing, which as you know, heals. Okay, I'm ulti. And now I'm healing for 4,800. But Sarah will probably be the second choice for a lot of people unless you're somebody like me who prioritizes his waifu over what's meta. Not to mention that Bennett, the little shit that he is, is not somebody I want in my party. <laughs> Constellations. To be honest with you, Sarah's constellation doesn't really interest me that much. Pretty much all of them just makes her two skills a lot better and deal more damage. However, there is one constellation that I would like all of you to take a look at because this can be a game changer. Her C6. Basically at C6, any Electro character that receives the attack bonus buff from her has their Electro critical damage increased by 60%. Now if you combine this with the attack bonus that you'll get from her regular skills and an Electro charge reaction from a decent Hydro character, your damage will be, what's the word for that, disgusting. People for far too long have been telling us that Electro is the worst element in the game, which is true by the way, Sarah still doesn't change that fact unfortunately, but for somebody like me, whose wife who is Beidou and is using Kaching for my DPS, who's going to be pulling for Ball and Yai and Miko, like holy shit how much Electro do I need in my life? For Electro users like myself, this is a game changer, provided of course that you have the funds to actually get her to C6, if not, just ignore this whole segment in the video. So, who's going to be the best characters to complement her playstyle? Kujo Sera will work well with any traditional Electro team. For example, a team composition built on the idea of maximizing the Electro charge reaction would work pretty well with her, especially if you combine her with Ball. Since Ball's E is going to be applying constant Electro reaction, if you get somebody like this boy as your Hydro source and you combine those with the attack bonus that Sarah will provide, well you've got yourself a pretty good team, don't you? Another example would be putting her in a Eula team composition where they would focus on dealing physical damage. The Electro that you'll get from Sarah can be triggered by Eula's Cryo, creating the Superconduct reaction that lowers the enemy's physical defense. Now assuming your Eula is built for physical damage, it's going to hit like a massive truck, sending that Hilichurl to another world. Personally, what I think could be interesting is that if you're able to get your Kujo Sarah to C6, just go all the way on Electro. One, two, three, four. A team with Ball, Beidou, and Sarah, complemented by a decent Hydro character, I think would absolutely be the perfect team composition for an Electro simp like me. Last but not the least, weapons and artifacts. 
This is honestly the most straightforward part of her kit, since her attack buff scales with her base attack, any weapon and artifact that increases that stat is going to be the best one for her, assuming of course that you're looking to actually utilize the buff. To be specific, I'd say the new Shimanawa's Reminiscence and Gladiator's Finale would be really good on her because they both provide an additional 18% on your attack if you have two pieces of each set. Both of their 4 piece buff isn't really that good for Sarah because you'll be swapping out of her anyway, so I'd say just go for two of each for a total of a 36% increase in your base attack. For weapons, the go-to 5 star for her is going to be the Amos Bow, just because it provides a shit ton of attack stats. But most of us are peasants, so honestly, just go for something like the Hamayumi. The Hamayumi Bow, which you can get from the Mysterious Conquest, provides not only the attack stat that you want, but is free to play friendly. Anybody can literally get this bow, so there's no reason for you to not have a decent weapon for Sarah. So that's it for today. Hopefully I've been able to convince some of you guys to shift some of your attention to this amazing character. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so the algorithm brings this video to more people. And if you have any questions, want to have a conversation, feel free to pop in at my Twitch where I play Genshin Impact and hopefully a variety of anime games in the future. I'll be streaming my polls for Ball on day one, so if you want to see me cry live on stream, then this is your chance to follow. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.